to the reading portion of Power Up for this particular week. We are supposed to have a week off and it's supposed to be about Trisha and I, but I was like, nah, let's get an awesome guest on to talk about what they're playing, watching, reading. If you are joining us live, what's up? If you are joining us VOD, you've already seen playing and watching. It's time to chat reading with Troy Baker. Hi, Laura, Troy Baker. What Hello. is happening? How are you going there? Going all right? Oh, yeah, mate. Oh, we go. Oh, actually... You lasted a while before doing I the know. Australian accent. I was going to say, normally I always do a shitty thing where you're like, ah, ha, 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 you got to do your shitty Australian accent for me. It wasn't so bad. I thought it was um, really good. Look at that. Look at those lovely pictures. I, my, <laughs> my copy of the Tao Te Ching um, was originally purchased. How did I do this? So my path for this was simple. I grew up, and again, it was like, you, you think this way, um, you you read this and everything else is wrong and you don't even just even opening your mind to it is a danger so you don't ask questions and I was like okay and then I hit my 20s and I had all of the questions and the true story is I read a book you're gonna laugh but I read a book and I read it in one night and it was about 450 pages I think and I read through the night and I woke up and I or I read through the night and in the morning I finished it and I went I don't know what I believe anymore like my entire system of faith had just been completely uprooted and that book was the Da Vinci Code <laughs> oh yeah I remember when I first read that I think I was like now, nine you couldn't put it down yeah what level first of all it's it's trashy airport god bless dan brown for being able to write you know make a, a his, his other books are far 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 better but how how shitty of a faith system must i have had if for it to be rocked by something that you could pick up at 699 at the hudson's you know, as you're going to fly to st louis so i was like yo i need to reach out and start doing some deep dives and like what do i really think about what's my world view shit i don't have a world view so I started reaching out to everything. And one of the things was um, The Art of War. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, but it's like, now it's a book of philosophy, but it starts talking about Lao Tzu and it starts talking about the Tao Te Ching. And I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna go over there. So then like, I started following this like, you know, beautiful mind, weird string going from here to there. And that book sat, and I was like, okay, so I have the Tao Te Ching, look at me. I'm, I'm, I'm a wizened person and I'm, I'm looking out to other perspectives and philosophies in the world. And that book sat in my bathroom. And so the copy that I have, like, you know, you get in the shower and stuff and there's steam and it like paperback books don't serve well in, in that. So my copy of the Tao Te Ching is kind of like wrinkled and, and everything. Um, as I much, much, much later, almost 20 years later, um, I was in, Scotland, I think, and I was going through a, a really rough time of just like, again, not, not for the same reason, but just starting to go, how do I feel about this? And, and I don't know if you've ever had to break up with a friend, but it's the worst. Uh, like breaking up. Yeah. So you know what I'm talking about? That right there is, is, is far more brutal, in my opinion, than breaking up with like a partner because, you know, you pretty much know that relationship's going to end unless you're going to be married forever. So, but with a friend, you're like, oh, I can't have you in my life anymore. And then you start, m my process was, because especially if that person is inextricably tied into your life, it could fundamentally uproot everything and you find yourself seemingly alone and you go, oh my gosh, I wasn't prepared for this. And this really, really hurts. And it becomes pervasive throughout your life. And I was like, I need to get a handle on this. So I, once again, just like after Dan Brown, I started scratching the surface for everything. And somebody goes, hey, I really think you should check out this book. And it was Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. And it is a 99 page book. And mm -hmm. for the next 18 months, I read that book. Um, and I finished it in 18 months. And it's because I would open it up and I would read a little bit and go, wow. And I would just sit and chew on that. And then that led to, it's was like, okay, so let me go up the river of stoicism. Where does that lead? And led back to Seneca and Epictetus. And then I started reading, I went, that's Western thought. So what's Eastern thought? Because Eastern thought can either predate or, or be in con, you know, uh, contemporary with that. And so I started going East and West. Mm -hmm. And so I had, um, that kind of led through different routes, but ultimately it led to um, 
like Alan Watts, and then Alan Watts kind of like, I was like, I need to understand more about what this, this Eastern philosophy is, and specifically the Chinese philosophy is. And so that led, led to the Tao Te Ching. And uh, I'll, I'll read this to you because it's the beauty of understanding that we fight so hard to understand and that we fight so hard for these things that we believe in, as opposed to sometimes just being like, maybe I just need to kind of let go a little bit. And, or like we were talking about earlier, it's like, oh, wait a minute, it's me that needed to change. So I, I, I'm reading this one thing in the morning, and again, these are very short aphorisms, kind of, you know, the pages are like, you know, four lines or whatever. But I said, um, I sent my friend something, I, I read one thing, and I said, epiphany. The turmoil I thought existed between you and me existed only in myself. The desire for explanation was the product of lack of understanding. The tension I felt was my own hands pulling the rope from either side. The need for reconciliation was really the need for acceptance. And I just was sitting there and was like, oh shit. It was my fault. And so I texted him that. And he replied back to me and was like, dude, I've been thinking about this too. And, and um, here's my responsibility in this. And I was finally ready to uh, send that message because I didn't need to hear back that I was right, they were wrong, mm -hmm. and even apologize. I was like, oh, dude, we don't even have to do apologies anymore. It doesn't matter. It's like I'm, I feel liberated because I know I was, I've been hanging on to this. So, and I've gotten made fun of um, and, and laughed at and uh, you know, just kind of general shit given by friends for doing this kind of deep dive into how I think because there's some people that think it's like, I don't, I don't know why I say this. I don't know why I do this. I just kind of do it. It's no big deal. It's just a turn of phrase or whatever. And I'm like, I, for me, I want to understand why I do what I do, why I say what I say, why I think what I think, why I feel what I feel. Because otherwise, it's like, a, like roaming around with a gun. I could hurt somebody unintentionally or hurt myself. So this has been me predominantly in the wake of not only what I thought was lost, but it was actually preparing me for my son and me just wanting to be the best person that I can be for him because he is already a two. He's an incredibly cool dude. And like, I, I look up to him <laughs> and I have to work this hard just to be good enough for him. That's what Get I'm out doing. of my head. <laughs> Get out. Uh, uh, because I'm exactly like that as well. I've been doing a lot of research into different personality tropes because of this falling out that I've had with my um, friend. And it purely just came down to the fact over one particular thing. And that was that I have such a yearning to learn and to grow mm -hmm. and to exactly that recognize particular faults or you know, how I can do and be better. Um, but that is something that I, because I'm hungry for it, I am applying it to other people and I will challenge people going, well, what was it that was wrong? Why can't we talk about it? I'm so willing to listen and to learn and to get better without actually kind of giving any kind of insight if that's what they want to do. Hmm. Because there are a lot of people out there that do not like oh. confrontation and they would actually prefer to walk away from a problem forever than to face it. And if I'm constantly challenge, challenging them to face it, it is actually really difficult for them to be my friend. And I didn't realize that. That makes sense. So, That's a lot of self-reflection. And so I've had to, that, that was quite an epiphany that you've given me, which is just like, you know what? I'm mm. so wanting to have those answers that maybe it's actually, why, why do I need those answers? And is it just, you know, easy just to kind of, is it better to let it go? Something that was hard for me is, and there's, there's a passage in Tao Te Ching where it says, muddied waters are best left undisturbed. They're best mm -hmm. cleared undisturbed. And it's like, yeah, but I want to I fix it. We need to get into this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, actually what you need to do. And by the way, that, convert, that, that exchange, that text exchange is four years in the making. Wow. So it's, it's, it's like, man, being, and I'm not saying it has to take four years, but I'm saying it can take four years for me to come to that place and for this person to come to the place too, it's like, oh dude, now we can, now, now the waters are clear and now we can both see the bottom, we can see the hazards that were there or we can actually see that they're no longer there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's anybody that tells you that 
you're stupid or you think too much or you shouldn't worry about this, just let ah, come on, just let it go, it's not a big deal, whatever. Um, that's someone who uh, is, a, is afraid of you becoming a better person, um, mm -hmm. deeply afraid, uh, because it's also reflective of them not wanting to go down the same path. And I believe, man, there's been so many conversations. I, I, I don't know if anybody else does this. I have a thing where I, like, I, I play out these scenarios in my head and I have the whole conversation with that person. It's like, ah, I would have said this. Yeah. And almost always now, what ends up me going, ah, I would have said this, somehow points right back to me and I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. can't believe that's, that's my fault. Holy mm. shit. And I will say this to anybody who has gone through a breakup, if you feel compelled to ask them how they're doing, to buy them a gift, um, <laughs> you have to do it. Oh, good. I have. Yeah, you have to do it. Uh, because to not do that is allowing that hurt and that pain and that strife to remain to keep you unhealed you you have to lean into it and go hey man i just want to see how you're doing today um hope you're well don't need a response back uh hey i saw this today it made me think of you hope that you're well and not expect a response mm -hmm. or i have to buy this gift for this person because the only reason why i wouldn't is out of spite um and that has been tremendously healing for me um, is allowing myself to allow myself to feel something other than anger towards somebody. Because if all I'm feeling is anger towards that person, then that's all I will ever feel is anger. And it's like, that's, we have to get past that point. Yeah, my biggest friend this breakup, like no joke, games. Troy. <laughs> my biggest friend breakup, um, 10 years we didn't speak. And then at San Diego Comic-Con, I randomly ran into her at San Diego Comic-Con and like probably went white as a ghost because she was like the last person I was expecting to see because we hadn't spoken in a decade. And we ended up meeting up for drinks at a hotel bar and having like a really nice conversation. And, it, you know, it was super weird to be like, well, what have you been up to these last 10 years? Because at one point we talked every day for a long, you... we talked every day for six and a half years and then just stopped speaking. And 10 years later had a conversation about it. So it really, I think, hits home when you say that the muddy waters might be best left undisturbed. Because there yeah. were a couple times I think I tried to reach out early on after that that did not go well. But just letting it be, eventually things got reconciled somewhat. Hmm. Dude. Well, um, I've been uh, emotionally assaulted uh, this particular portion because uh, <laughs> this is, yeah, definitely you've covered two major things that have been happening to me the last two months consecutively so uh, yeah someone said well is this too real for Maud and I'm like yep <laughs> 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 that's what power down is for um, but let's bring Amy back in just to do a bit of a final bombs away Q&A just mm -hmm. to answer some last questions because we are running over and I do apologize for that people that you know may have to be somewhere Troy included uh, Amy what do we got from Patreon for questions so this one's from Radian Morgan. How does it feel to be the voice of what many people consider their favorite video game character? Your favorite video game character? Uh huh. Mm. How does it feel to be the voice of people's favorite video game characters? Mm -hmm. Oh man. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Equally as interesting when someone goes, "You're my least favorite." <laughs> that happens. Um, you know what people are awful. Oh man, I did Mass Effect three. I was in. I was Kai Lang in that. That I got a lot of hate mail for that. Um, I the 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 best um, the the best compliment I could be given is when someone says uh, you've inspired me to do this. Uh, yeah. uh, the second best compliment is when someone goes, "That was you." Nice. Um, if I can do that, then that means like, man, I disappeared into that thing, and not like Daniel Day Lewis. I'm talking about like, <laughs> you didn't know it was me. Like if I can do that, that's me actually really, really allowing that character to come through. There have been incredible moments. I, I remember New York Comic Con, we'll change the music a little bit. New York Comic Con, uh, we're doing some press for something and, and somebody goes, man, I'm sorry to do this, but uh, my daughter, is, um, she's a huge Batman fan and she would just love uh, to hear from Batman. I was like, 
I mean, you need to get Kevin Conroy up in here. You know, there's like a lot of other people. He was like, no, 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 you don't understand. You're her Batman. You were her first introduction to Batman. And I got to do like this on the phone. It's like, hello, girl, or whatever. And it was like for this five-year-old girl, and she just flipped out. And I was like, I know that feeling of when I first heard Kevin Conroy talk to me. And I don't know what that's going to do for that five-year-old. It may just make her want, you know, juice and take a nap. But <laughs> for me, that that was the inspiration for me to be here is, mm -hmm. is when I heard that someone had, and that was, it was that show, it was Batman the Animated Series, that was like, that's somebody's job. And it unlocked everything else. I knew who Mel Blanc was, but I didn't realize that that was somebody's job was to go in and make a cartoon mm -hmm. and be the, just the voice of it. And I was like, I don't know. Like I grew up in, and I was, I had no athletic ability. I was, I was skinny and awkward and um, just wasn't comfortable in my own body. wasn't comfortable in my own skin. And that, that caused massive, you know, self image that, that are, that became deeply rooted. But that, this one thing was like, but this thing I can do, like I, I, I can make my voice do different things and I can be different people that way. And it won't matter what I look like. It won't matter, mm -hmm. you know, the color of my eyes or the color of my hair or how tall or how short or how, how if I'm muscular or not, I, this I can do. And that gave me the confidence to be able to pursue other things to where I go, I can change, I can, I can change my mind and the way that I think about the world. I can change my body and the way that it feels and the way that it looks. Not because I'm trying to impress anybody, but because I want to feel better about who I am. Um, so this, that, that unlock was a huge thing for me. When someone says, how does it feel to be someone's favorite video game character? I was like, if that makes you be a better person, if, if I in any way can bring a little bit of hope, joy, or inspiration to your life, then that, that is a check that I cannot cash, but that I will take any day of the week. Any day of the week. That's awesome. So good. Have we got one from uh, Twitch chat, Amy? Yes. Um, <laughs> this is from STS two eight eight four. What oh, have you I was always? We would hear from them. <laughs> um, what have you always wanted to try with your hair, but haven't? <laughs> I love. I don't even know who you are, and I love you. Please let this be the absolute last question, because after this entire conversation, yep. Holy crap. This is it. We're ending um, on this note. Look, I so <laughs> my hair has been like the thing that for whatever reason, I whilst I can control it, I will. And uh, it's been every color of the rainbow that I could think of. Uh, I've had good haircuts and bad haircuts. And if you do a Google image, Google image search, you can find evidence of both. Um, at 42 years old, I decided or maybe I was 43. I can't remember. I decided it was like, yeah, I got I got a baby. I could do him. I could do a mohawk. Let's do that. And so I like I like did full like mohawk, and I love it. Um, and I was like, I'm gonna wear an earring again because I want to, and and not because anybody else is saying that it's cool or whatever. Um, I just feel like in my 40s, especially, I've come more into I don't care what's cool. I want to do what what I who, I want to be who I am. Preach. Um, and be okay with with that um because i've seen a lot of brave people that are not dealing with haircuts and earrings that are dealing with like no this is who i'm attracted to and this is who i who i feel that, that i am and if they have the power and they have the confidence and they have the strength to be to stand in that in their identity i can have a mohawk <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean i can wear that hat um so yeah, that's that's my um, in, in in no way compares uh, to to that level of of just assertitude and, and bravery and confidence, but it has inspired me to be like, yeah, I can I can have that this much confidence to be like, yeah, I'm 44 and I'm gonna have a mohawk. <laughs> You're rocking it, dude. I love it, man. You're rocking I it. it. 
going through your cloud hair phase. I was about it though. I was about it. Yeah, I was uh, in thank a- Thank you so much for joining us. I think we will wrap things up there. Thank you to the chat who's been so amazing throughout this entire show. We have caught what Troy has been playing, watching and reading in this last portion of the lockdown. Again, if you've got subs or if you've got follows happening, click those buttons because we really appreciate it. Uh, Trish and I will be back next week. Uh, probably no guests, but we've been watching, reading, and playing a bunch of stuff as well. We have. Um, actually, let's go back to Troy just really quickly to see what uh, where people can catch him, yes. where people can follow him, what you're working on at the moment, what you would like to direct people towards. Oh, direct people towards their hearts. <laughs> um, tw- Twitter and Instagram. I'm, all, I'm more frequent on Twitter uh, at Troy Baker V A. Um, official Troy Baker on Instagram. Right now, we've got a very, very small, hyper-focused group of people on our Patreon um, that are learning what it means to be a relator. Um, we did put up a conversation on YouTube with Neil Druckmann. Uh, you can go to uh, youtube.com forward slash Troy Baker uh, to find that. Uh, eventually, we're going to open up Relator to more people. Right now, we're just kind of like keeping it super, super hyper-focused. Um, but I think they can go to Patreon and find out more about that. So I think it's Patreon Relator channel of Relator. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you do play, play Watch Listen as well, right? Yes, and I'm doing a fucking amazing podcast with Alana Pierce and Mike Bithel mm-hmm. and Austin Wintry, three of my favorite people in the world. That comes out weekly, and it's the four people that discuss this industry from four different perspectives. And just like this, we go tangents and go crazy, <laughs> and Mike Bithel grows a beard every week. So, <laughs> Love it. Yay. Um, well, I'm- Go That's check out Troy on all the things. All of the things. All of the things. Go ahead, Mod. Oh, I was just going to say you can find that podcast where you find your good podcast, and it's also available on um, Alana's YouTube channel too. If you mm-hmm. want to watch that one every single week. Uh, thank you so much, though, for being a part of Power Up this week. We are going to end things up because we are super, super over. But Troy, thank you for that because I could listen to you talk and tell stories all yes. day long, and it was an absolute pleasure for that one. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bingo, bye-bye. Yes, thank you all so very much for tuning in. This was such a special episode. Thank you again to Troy. Thank you again to Amy. Um, Thank you all of you who were here and watched it live. And if you missed a chunk of it and you want to check it out later, make sure to do that over on YouTube.com slash Geek Bomb. We are going to head out right now to do Power Down, the after show, which is for Geek Bomb patrons only. So if you want to check that out, that's where you can find it. And uh, thank you to all the followers again and Ollie Morrison for gift and subs. You guys are awesome. The next time that I will be live is tomorrow morning. I'm doing a charity D&D stream uh, with B. Dave and Nora and a bunch of the lovely folks that you know from the Dungeons and Dragons world um, over on Luke Gygax's channel, I believe. I'll, I'll social it out. You can see where it is. But it starts at 9 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow morning. Um, and then I have a Naked Truth in the afternoon. Um, Maud, any, any place they can see you coming up soon? Peace. <laughs> Next week on Power Up. No, uh, if you have Quibi, you can watch Maud on Fresh Daily. Yeah, that's right. You can. That's right. Fresh <laughs> Daily. And we're going through, I'll tell you guys first, we're rebranding the show. It's going to have a new name come Ooh. Monday. Yep. All right. Well, stay tuned for that hot gossip. Um, and yeah. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. 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 Bingo, bongo, bang.